I'm gonna try to stray away from this, but just in case I forget where I'm at, I'm gonna come back to it. But it is an honor and a privilege to be standing here before all of you men and to share a piece of my journey with the Lord. Just a little background. I, um, Christian here at St. Mark, I am married with children. Grew up on Long Island, in case you can't tell my accent. My wife, Sally, grew up in Ecuador. Uh, we've been married just about 18 and a half years, and both of us are cradle Catholics. My brothers, come with me as we rewind back to the latter part of 2001. Fresh off the 9-11 terrorist attacks in our country, our daughter Jessie was born, and our son Nico was about to turn three. Now, at this time, we weren't living our faith. We'd go to Mass most Sundays, um, but we weren't praying together as a family. We didn't read the Bible. We weren't reading any spiritual books. Really, basically, we were just, we were, we were into partying with our friends, uh, you know, drinking, dancing, and just enjoying and living the good life. So we just had Jesse, and I was 41 at the time, and my wife was 30. And so, doing the math, when Jesse goes off to college, I'll be 59, I can retire, and we can travel and enjoy our retirement. That was the plan. We had the perfect family, one boy, one girl, and we were done having children. So Sally and I had the discussion, is she going to have her tubes tied or will I have a vasectomy? And I said, oh, I'll have the vasectomy. Well, around this time, my parents were down from New York visiting. And one day we were in the kitchen and my mom was cleaning the counters and she came across a note that Sally had written. Paulie's vasectomy. Ooh. <laughs> Thank God for my mother. She said something to me to the effect of, Paul, you know, you know this is against the teaching of the church. My response, which I don't recall, was in essence, hey mom, Sally just went through her second full pregnancy. I'm not gonna put her through that again. So that was that. We continued to live our lives with our two children. And the topic of having more children really didn't come up again. Then Sally and I lived our Curcio weekend. You've heard a little bit about Curcio. It's just one of the many wonderful movements within our church. And for us, it was the springboard to start to live our faith and to want to get to know God better. I had this fire burning inside of me to grow closer to our Lord and to learn more about his church. So. As we began to grow in our faith and start to walk with the Lord and get to know him through study, God started to open up our minds and our hearts about some truths for the vasectomy that we chose to have. So we learned in a Bible study that when we choose birth control, we are not trusting God by letting him be in control of our lives. But little by little, the Lord fed us little bite-sized nuggets of knowledge, but only what we could handle. One of the things we did for penance, it was during Lent of 2009. We went to pray in a local abortion clinic. That's something I had never done. And Sally starts telling me, you know what, I, I feel like a hypocrite. And I said, why? He said, well, okay, we're not killing children by abortion, but we are denying the life-giving power that God shares with us the miracle of procreation, which is something that we can no longer do. So we weren't killing a human being, but we had already killed the possibility of God creating new life through us. So, and now there's this restlessness within me. There is something bothering me. Something's tugging at me. The best way to describe it is things just didn't seem complete. 
that didn't seem quite right. And I realized that I was starting to regret the decision to have a vasectomy. Well, right around this time, Sally gets an email from a friend, and it's got notes from a women's Lenten talk that one of the priests in this diocese gave. Interesting title of the talk, How to Change Your Husband. That was the talk. Now, to Sally's credit, and as a testament to her superior intelligence, she deleted the email. <laughs> but she got that same email from a different friend a short time later, and she deleted it again. Then she got the same email a third time. Now she's thinking, wait a minute, God trying to tell me something? That same month, Sally was engaged in a debate with our brother-in-law, they live in Japan, over the internet about abortion. And it touched on the subject of birth control. So in order to equip my wife for this debate, God in his infinite wisdom sent her a CD about the conversion of Kimberly Hahn, Scott Hahn's wife. And from this CD, she realized <laughs> that we were just simply using each other when we were doing the marital act. We were lying to each other. We weren't giving ourselves fully and completely to each other as God calls us to in holy matrimony. Now she started to understand why this act to her felt a bit dirty. Anyway, back to the email. So she reads it. She forwards to me just the part about contraception. And she asks, what do you think? So I read it, and it was powerful. I want to share a couple of things with you that struck me. And I'm quoting from the talk. The church teaches that the marital act has two purposes. The primary purpose is the procreation of children. The secondary purpose is the unity of a couple. Neither purpose should ever be divorced from the marital act because doing so distorts the purpose of the act. That struck me. With contraception and sterilization, by eliminating the possibility of procreation, it severely limits the love of the act itself. And we make that act something less than it was intended to be. And this is the part that hit me. And we take God right out of the picture. So um, I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty powerful. Um, I want to go talk to a priest friend of ours whom we love, and I'll just call him Father. And I, I just want to see what Father thinks about all this. My wife looks at me and says, Paul, Father is the one who gave the talk. <laughs> okay. Um, so we go and talk with Father, and we were honest with him. We just said we realized we just made a terrible decision having a vasectomy, and that both of us, we had this strong sense of just wanting to make things right with God, whatever that looked like. Father never once told us, you need to go have that vasectomy reversed. He never said that. What he said was, go before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament in adoration. Pray about this. If God wants you to have the reversal, he'll tell you, or not. And I always remember he said, Trust your prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament with those piercing eyes. Okay. So Sally and I went right to that chapel, and we prayed together in the presence of God to see what, if anything, he wanted us to do. We're done praying. We walked out of the chapel. I'll never forget it. We were standing right in the hallway there, and we looked at each other. Yep. Both knew without saying a word. God wanted us to make things right with him by having the vasectomy reversed. And it's something that he separately put on both of our hearts, this desire to just want to make things right with God. So we both went to confession. We told God how sorry we were, and we asked him for his forgiveness. Oh, and at this time, I had lost my job, so I was out of work for several months. But my brothers, I felt as if God was telling me to trust him in this. 
So I chose to trust him. And Sally chose to trust him. And he led us to a doctor up in High Point. We went, and I had the vasectomy reversed, and that was in 2009. Later that year, God blessed me and our family with a great new job. Okay, this is the part I'm going to have a tough time with. And then, four and a half months ago, on October 18th, 2013, which was the Feast of St. Luke, Gabriella Marie Anatrella was born into this world. You know, honestly, I thought that all that God wanted from us was to make things right. That's, that's all I thought he wanted, to trust him, to take courage, and to go through with the reversal. I never thought that he would bless us with a baby girl. But as we all know, God can never be outdone in generosity. My fellow brothers in Christ, what God helped me to realize is that we were just we were just snuffing out the possibility of him bringing any life into our family by our decision to have a vasectomy or by any means of birth control. That we were doing things our way instead of God's way. We prayed, I will be done, but what we were living, really, was my will be done. In essence, we were playing the role of God. One last thing. When Sally and I were at the hospital four and a half months ago, and we were about to go back to the operating room for her C-section, Father came to visit us. He gave Sally an anointing of the sick, and he was overjoyed for us. And he told us that God had accepted our repentance and had chosen to gift us this brand new life with our baby girl. That hit me hard as we were about to go in and have Gabriella, but how great, how great is our God. I marvel at his infinite love for all of us, at his incredible patience with each one of us, and for his infinite mercy. Praise be Jesus Christ. Thank you.